Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at the Unit 2 test review. <clears throat> we'll go over each and every problem. So if you guys want to study with the review, you can. And also check your answers. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Number one, translate point Z along vec the vector. And label the image point, which we will do. Okay. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw that vector for me. So that's about its length right there. And I'm going to take that and move it to the point Z, just so I can see exactly where to move it. So I'm taking this and moving it there. That tells me how far to move Z. So um, this point right here would be Z prime. And that's all we want on that one, is for you guys to translate that point Z to Z prime. Number two, we're going to use the same diagram to, uh, to write a sentence about what we know about the lengths of z, z prime, and the vector. Okay, well, from here, since I duplicated that red vector into the purple one, they're the same length. Bam, done. If for some reason you felt the need to go even beyond that, uh, we would write that these two are also parallel. Let points A and B on line L and the vector AC be given as shown. Translate line L along the vector AC and we will label it. So um, it should have shown the points on this. Alright, so we have this all labeled now. Uh, let's go ahead and move the line AB uh, in the same uh, or along that vector AC. So again, what I'm going to do is the same thing I did on that last one, is just kind of uh, duplicate it. And this is something you guys would do with uh, some kind of scratch piece of paper on this thing. And I'm going to move it along that red line, or the red vector there, AC. So let's see if this will work on this thing. Okay, so since A is on that line, I'm just going to move this point along that red line like this, all the way until I get to the tip right here. Uh, we'll show the rest of it right there. And this is the line. Uh, but to label it, this would be the line L prime. So that is the translated line L to L prime. What do we know about at line L and its image L prime? Uh, if we'd have to ignore this red vector right there. And we would see that these two lines are parallel. Now that's just from the lesson, from uh, lesson three, I believe. All translated lines are parallel. All right, part C then. How many other lines can you draw through point C and have the same relationship as L and L prime? So they'd have to be parallel, right? So that would be just like taking this line and then moving it right there. However, um, I can only draw one line through that point, so how many other lines could I, could I draw through that point? None. None. Let there be a reflection across line AB, and yeah, we could mark that as AB if we wanted to, something like this. And we're going to reflect triangle PQR across line AB, reflect the image. Okay. All right, so this is what it should look like on your paper right here. Uh, they may not have, yeah, we did not get the AB on there. Uh, but it doesn't matter, it just, that's just the line of reflection for us anyways. So we're gonna reflect all those points across that line AB. So to do that, actually I'll zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna start with the point P, and we don't have to worry about the lines on this, just the points. So looking at uh, this, this point P, right here, the vertice of that triangle is I'm going to make a 90 degree angle or the best I can with the line of reflection and I've just got to go in the other direction the same distance so that's about right there and this then would be labeled P prime next up we'll do Q so to get from Q to Q prime again I'm, this should be around a 90 degree angle right there so I've got to go in the other direction the same distance 
and this would then be Q prime. Next up R, same idea on this thing. Again, I'm trying to draw this at 90 degrees. I'm going to go in the other direction, the same distance at 90 degrees, and then this point would be R prime. So all I got to do now is connect these points. And uh, that's okay. If I saw this on the test, it, that is not perfect, but we're doing this kind of freehand right there, so we don't expect it to be exactly perfect, but pretty close, all right? Now there are some other points we can put on this, not points, but some labels. Since the angle PQR was 60 degrees, the angle P prime, Q prime, R prime also will be 60 degrees. And then the length PR was 12 feet, so the length P prime, R prime also will be another 12 feet. That's going to come up in one of the other questions. Number five there, use the diagram above to state the measure of the reflected angle PQR. So PQR is this one right here, and we can see that, that we already had it labeled at 60 degrees. Why is it 60 degrees? Because reflections will preserve angles, or they keep angles the same. The next question, use the diagram above to state the length of P prime R prime, which is this line right here, and we already had that labeled at 12 feet. So explain. It's because reflections keep lengths the same as well, so they preserve length. Number seven, connect P, point P, to its image in the diagram above. So that's this red line that we already have right here. What is the relationship between line AB and the segment that connects point P to its image? So we're really looking at this relationship, that red and purple line right there that I just drew. And uh, as we've already drawn on this, it's a 90 degree angle, which means that the two lines are perpendicular. All right, number eight. Given the figure M, which is really the heart, actually we're not so worried about this stuff. We're going to rotate, rotate the heart 90 degrees about O. Now we need to be specific on this one. It does say 90 degrees. That's positive 90 degrees. So we got to make sure it is rotated in the correct direction. And since it is positive, we will need to rotate it in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise. Let's see if we can redo that counterclockwise like this. So, uh, some of you guys would stay to the left and that's okay as well. And they gave us this point O right here, right? On your worksheet. So that's the point we're going to be rotating this heart. Here's what I'm going to do then. So, like you guys should do, is I would put a scratch piece of paper over this and trace it. And from this tracing, we got the point O right here, which is uh, the point at which we are going to rotate this thing. So now I should prepare to rotate it then. Alright, so this is what I got. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So if my paper were on top of my uh, worksheet or review horizontally, then I would turn it 90 degrees so that it is vertical. If it were vertical, I would turn it 90 degrees so that it's um, horizontal. So I'm going to take this and turn it 90 degrees in the positive direction, which should be at this point right here, or about right there, I guess maybe a little bit more. I get my heart's not perfect, but um, that's okay. We just want it to be about like this, all right? So again, use your scratch paper to do that, but this is what it should look like. What you can do with this thing to make sure it shows up on the page behind it, because this would be on the transparency, right? It just you can kind of push kind of hard on that red line, the red uh, heart, and then it should show up on the next one. Some of you guys have markers and that should kind of go through the paper as well. Sometimes that works. Let there be a rotation of 180 degrees around the origin. Point T has coordinates of negative six, negative four, and point U has coordinates three, seven, as shown in this uh, graph right here. 
Part A says, what are the coordinates of T prime? So that would be after the uh, rotation of 180 degrees. So what we can do is take the point and rotate it, starting with this point T. However, if we use the rule, well, let's actually not use the rule first, okay? So I'm going to put this point here at the center of rotation. Whenever I rotate this, I should get T prime, so I'm going to do that. All right, so the rotation is going to be something like this one right here. And I got, um, yeah, where were we? I got this point right here. That is T prime. It's kind of come upside down with that point, but um, that's okay. That'll do. So I'll label that T prime then. This is T prime. And I've got the point at 6, 4, which is the coordinates of T prime. 6, 4. And we made it on the graph as well. Now that's using the transparency or whatever paper you got to do what I just did. So you put your pencil on the origin right here. And then you would turn your paper until you've rotated 180 degrees right there. Yeah, let's move that up a little bit, but um, it should be right there. All right, point U, which is at 3, 7 right here. We're going to rotate that 180 degrees, but I'm not going to use the rotation method on this. I'm going to use the coordinate rule. So if I had 3, 7, U prime would be the opposites of those. So instead of 3, I've got negative 3. And instead of 7, I'd have negative 7. So I can graph that point. 3, negative 7 would be this point right here at U prime. And now we have the coordinates and the label on the graph. All right, number 10, what can you say about the points T, T prime, and O, and also U, U prime, and O? Well, let's go ahead and connect those to make a line. So what we should notice from this is that uh, these two lines, these two lines also go through the center of rotation, which is at the origin. Next up, it says to connect point T to point U to make line L, a uh, line TU, then we'll connect point T prime and point U prime to make the point, the line uh, uh, T prime, U prime. What is the relationship between the two lines? Let's connect those first. All right, so I connected those points with these two green lines right here. And uh, these green lines, we should be able to see that these two are parallel. So uh, that's all I'm gonna write on this is the two lines are parallel. Well, as it turns out, that's the whole review. Again, uh, these problems are going to be pretty much like the ones that you guys see on the test. So uh, if you can do all of these, then you should do really well on the test. If you got any of these wrong, especially if you guys are um, reviewing or uh, trying to do them like the regular test, then you got to study these a little bit more.